All right, Greg, question for you. I'm going to use a little bit of uh, creative license here to uh, to rephrase it. So uh, Mika asked, fiber type differentiation as consequence of a, a specific stimulus. I, I'm thinking the question there is, can you intentionally train for a shift in fiber type? Is that how, how you interpret that? Yeah, yeah, I, I, okay. I think that's uh, I think that's what Mika is asking. So, um, yes, you can. And it's, well, you, you can to some extent. Um, so this question or the, this answer catches a lot of people off guard. Um, and probably less so now since Andy Galpin is pretty well known at this point. But if you, um, if you took, uh, in anatomy and physiology class at any point during the last 20 years, you probably learned that fiber type interconversion between type 2A and type 2X fibers is possible and happens all the time. But you probably also learned that fiber type interconversion between type 1 and type 2 fibers doesn't really happen. Um, or if it does happen, it's only under very extreme circumstances. So for example, with aging type two motor nerves can die and then, uh, offshoots of type one motor nerves can re innervate those prior type two fibers and then they become type one fibers. But that, that's kind of, um, a, a somewhat extreme case. So, but, but you, you probably learned that just from normal day to day, exercise training you don't get interconversion of type 1 and type 2 fibers so what we now know is that we thought that mainly due to pretty crude methods of identifying fibers um, so it would primarily just be taking a muscle biopsy cutting it uh, cutting a cross section of it staining it and then based on how dark or how light those stained fibers showed up as, just identifying them as type 1, type 2A, or type 2X fibers and putting them neatly into those three categories. There is um, a, a much more time-consuming but a much better method of quantifying fiber types um, where... You, you basically take single fibers and use gel electrophoresis to be able to quantify the percentage of different myosin heads within that muscle fiber. Um, and then you do that for a slew of fibers, and that gives you a better idea of, of the spectrum of fiber types an individual has. And that gives us the insight that there are hybrid fiber types. So you have some fibers that... All of the myosin heads are type 1. You have some fibers where all of the myosin heads are, are type 2A. And most people don't have true type 2X fibers where all of the myosin heads within the fiber are type 2X. But some people have a smattering of them. Um, but then, especially for untrained athletes, you have a lot of hybrid fibers where... You know, maybe in one fiber, 70% of the myosin heads are type 2A, 30% are uh, type 1. In another fiber, maybe it's 70% type 1, 30% type 2A, uh, or a hybrid between 2A and 2X where, you know, some of the myosin heads are 2A myosin, some of them are 2X. And then you can even have hybrids that have type 1 myosin heads, type 2A, and type 2X. So hybrid fibers are a thing and there is, um, so one of the hallmarks of training is that you basically lose hybrid fibers, um, and you lose them in the direction that you train for the most part. So, you know, let's say you have j just to make, let's just assume type two X fibers don't exist for a second, just to make this illustration easy. Let's say pre-training, you have 40% pure type 1 fibers, 40% pure type 2A fibers, and 20% type 1, type 2A hybrid fibers. 
if you do aerobic training, then those hybrid fibers will shift and become pure type 1 fibers, such that after a fair amount of training, it would look something pretty close to 60% type 1, 40% type 2A, with very, very few hybrid fibers. If you detrained again, it would probably go back to 40, 40, 20, type 1, type 2A, and hybrid. If instead you did resistance training or some sort of anaerobic training, um, and like like heavy anaerobic training, so like weightlifting, strongman, probably throwing, stuff like that, um, it would shift the other direction such that you would wind up with 40% type 1, 60% type 2A, and very, very few hybrids. So having a lot of hybrid fibers is uh, kind of a hallmark of being a very low training status um, and just being pretty sedentary for the most part. And trained athletes, it, so I don't know, I, I don't know, and I don't even know how you would study whether like a pure type 2A fiber could become a pure type 1 fiber. Uh, I, I don't even know how you would quantify that. But what we do know is you can get um, very substantial fiber type differentiation within those hybrid fibers based on how you train. Um, and another thing is if you do have any type 2X fibers, they pretty much just go away with training. Um, I remember learning in x that doing power training would cause a fiber type interconversion from type 2a to type 2x um my professor that taught me that wasn't really a muscle fizz guy so i don't know that he was basing that on any evidence i think he may have just assumed that that's how it works so that's how he taught us but if you learn something similar that doesn't really happen um there there is some research that if you do pretty low volume power training you can better preserve type 2x myosin heads within your muscle fibers but i i don't necessarily know that that's a beneficial thing but yeah for the most part uh your proportion of type 2x myosin heads goes down with training regardless of what type of training you do and those hybrids get interconverted or get converted primarily to either pure type 1 or pure type 2a in the direction of the type of training you do. So if you do resistance training, you'll mostly get conversion of hybrid fiber types to type 2A fibers. If you mostly do aerobic endurance training, you'll mostly get conversion of those hybrid fibers to type 1 fibers. I have a follow-up question. Sure. So if this co conversion can occur due to training, do you think it matters do you think it's something that we ought to intentionally train for or do you see it as a consequence of training um yeah i see it as a consequence of training i mean so if, you you wouldn't tell somebody to go out and say you should train like this so that you convert these fibers no i i mean the direction of the fiber type conversions kind of makes sense like yeah if, if you if you want to be an endurance athlete, you probably want more type 1 myosin heads within within your muscle fibers. And so just doing endurance training will give you that adaptation. And you don't specifically have to do a specialized form of endurance training to cause that adaptation. And same would apply for type 2A myosin heads and resistance training. So, yeah, I, I don't... I don't I, I can't think of a situation where you would need to train for that adaptation that would be outside of the normal training you would want to do for whatever other types of adaptations you're aiming for. Yeah. Can I take a moment to brag really quick? Yeah. You mentioned uh, learning undergrad x -phys muscle physiology. Did I ever tell you about who I learned muscle physiology from? No. So he was the PI on several studies looking at myostatin inhibition, um, starting with rodent models, then working up to primate models. And at the time that I was in that class, which was about 10 years ago, um, he was actually gearing up to do a human trial on myostatin inhibition. Um, 
when he talked about muscle, it was just so fascinating. Like I would show up to that class like 15 minutes early to get the best seat. It was so cool. <laughs> That's um, awesome. I, I never, I never ended up checking in to see if that human trial got off the ground or what, what the results were though. I need to check that out someday.